Welcome guys um, to our presentation about Ethiopia, a country on the rise. I'm here with my colleagues, Sarah, Lex, Daniel, Mahan, and myself. Let's dive into it. So we're going to start with the geographical landscape. As you can see, Ethiopia is a very big country situate, situated in the Horn of Africa. Its neighboring countries are Sudan, Eritrea, Djibouti, Somalia, and Kenya. The capital of the big country is Addis Ababa, and it lies in the center of Ethiopia um, in its highlands. The altitude is 2,355 meters, making it the third highest capital city in the whole world. You can see the flag right next to it. It has different colors with different meanings, such as green stands for labor, development, and fertility. Yellow stands for hope, justice, and equality. Red stands for the sacrifice of freedom. And blue is for peace. The yellow stands for the bright future of Ethiopia. Then you have Nektana, which is very important because it's connected to the Nile. Also, it meets with the White Nile that comes from Sudan. The a Great Rift Valley is very important because it gives us a good understanding of mankind and its evolution. Uh, we're going to um, go further with the political landscape. You have four branches, as you can see. The head of it is uh, the president, the first female president. Her name is... Sale Wok Sote, and um, the first prime minister, well, the prime minister is Abi Ahmed, um, which is very remarkable. It's a, a big, uh, well, uh, it's very complicated, but which, uh, what is very remarkable is the judicial branch because the members there, um, they retire at the age of 60 years old. The political stability index, as you can see on the graph, um, uh, it's very important because it gives us a good understanding of how stable the um, how stable politics are. The strongest point that you can have is 2.5, and the lowest one is minus 2.5. As you can see, they weigh around like 150 something. Um, so it indicates that it's not very good, and it can. Um, impact your um, your business in the future, but we hope on a more stable um, uh, environment in the future. I'm giving the floor to Daniel. Thank you. Coming to the demographic, uh, I would like to talk about the socioeconomic landscape. Uh, according to uh, the population pyramid, the population of Ethiopia is approximately 115 million. When analyzing population growth, we can see how it could grow and what can that mean uh, for the future business. On the graph on the right, you can see that, they, uh, that here uh, there is a great uh, opportunity for the youth because approximately 70% of the total uh, population is under the age of 34. Uh, this means uh, that there will be a great contribution for labor uh, force uh, because young people have more energy to carry on. However, high fertility and rapid population growth do have a negative impact on socioeconomic uh, development sectors such as agriculture, healthcare, housing, and many more. According to the United Nations in 2010, they estimated that Ethiopia, popula Ethiopia's population will reach 200 million by 2050. As I go forward to the next slide, um, te uh, technology in Ethiopia is growing fast. But Ethiopia wants to be uh, Africa's next innovation capital, uh, competing with other developed, uh, uh, developed nations uh, such as Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa. Uh, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Minister uh, Abe Ahmed, has implemented progressive policies in business, finance, and telecommunications. This expansion has resulted in pover uh, poverty reduction in both urban and rural areas. On the other hand, Ethiopia lacks the communication and financial infrastructure designed to sustain these digital innovation policies. As I go forward to the education uh, part, Ethiopia uh, literacy rates are significantly lower within the African region than globally in average. Primary schools are well accessible and have a high rate of enrollment. However, secondary schools enrollment is declining due to a lack of proper financing, uh, teaching staff that becomes short, facilities and space. The public school system is really, really weak in general, for example, overcrowding is a common thing. 
I pass to Sarah. So now I'm gonna talk about the three business sectors you can invest in in Ethiopia, manufacturing sector, tourism sector, and processing sector. So Ethiopia's manufacturing sector is very important to the country's economy, processing food, textiles, beverages, tobacco, chemical goods, footwear, soap, and leather are among the products produced by companies. Uh, tourism sector, so the tourism and services sector generated 5.5% of Ethiopia's GDP in 2006, with private enterprises playing a key role. The government is encouraging tourism as one of many efforts aimed to eradicating uh, poverty and boosting economic development. Ethiopia was designated to the world's best tourism destination by the European Council in 20, uh, 2015. Food processing sector, so uh, the food sector brings a lot of money for the government. Meat, butter, milk, uh, frozen food, fresh fruits, bakery products, uh, sugar, cheese, all very popular food factory products. Approximately 1 million people work in the food processing business in Ethiopia. Um, going to the cost of doing business, according to the global businesses, uh, global business setup experts, if you want to start a business in Ethiopia, you will have uh, it will co it comes with costs and fees. So to start up in one year, um, it would cost around eight thousand seven hundred dollars, and the average fees and costs amounts to sixteen eight hundred thousand dollars. This includes business incorporation and opening a local business account at a bank, and all government fees that come with it. And moving to the best locations in Ethiopia, you can. Do, uh, you can go to Hwasa and Addis Ababa. Hwasa is a wonderful location for business. It is also one of Ethiopia's most popular tourist destinations. Hwasa is, the, is home to Africa's largest manufacturing park at full capacity. The $250 billion industrial park is planned to employ up to 60,000 workers. Currently, the manufacturing park is home to 21 worldwide manufacturing enterprises, including high-profile names like H&M and Tommy Hilfiger. In Addis Ababa, this is Ethiopia's largest city, which is which has a population of 2.5 million people. The city rapidly is expanding with skyscrapers, offices, shopping malls, hotels, and roadways that are still being built till this day. And with these eye-catching architectural buildings, something that Addis Ababa may become Africa's new Dubai. I'll give the floor to Mara now. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm going to talk about the different ethnic groups you can find in Ethiopia, because apart from being united by pride and patriotism, Ethiopians also share a connection since all of their different cultures and traditions can be combined under the term Habesha. A few examples of the 80 different tribes and sub-tribes that are documented are the Oromo and Amhara, which represent 70% of the population, and other ones are the Tigray, Tigrinya and Sidama. Ethiopians are very proud of their Habasha identity since they have never been colonized and have therefore been able to keep their unique cultures. Since 1995, Ethiopia is subdivided into different states where every state represents an ethnic group. This can be called an ethnic federation and is constructed to give ethnic groups political independence. The negative side of the system is that it has created more tension between ethnic groups politically since some ethnic groups have more political power and also more power in the business world. So, um, as we go forward to the current political situation uh, in Ethiopia, there is a civil war going on since 2020 um, between the government and the former legal party TPLF. The TPLF was established in circa 1970 to represent the third largest ethnic group, the Tigrayans. Under the regime of the head of TPLF, Meles Tenawi, Ethiopia was a stable country with many ec economic growth. However, this uh, government rep repressed their political opponents and limited free speech. Uh, the Prime Minister Abe ordered, uh, uh, Mr. Abe ordered a military offensive against the Tigrayans and declared, declared a six-month state of emergency in Tigray. In the months that followed, both parties gained terrain on the other, but there is still no clear winner. Now, uh, the Tigrayan rebels are trying to have control of a key supply route by seizing uh, the road to, that leads to a port in Djibouti. So this civil war is tearing apart Ethiopia and is the cause of genocides and sexual violence of the citizens. The war also led to famine of 9.4 million people on the northern Ethiopian side. Uh, another conflict that is going on is a war with South Sudan and Egypt. 
since Ethiopia is building a dam on the Nile to help with water supply. So you can go to Ethiopia without knowing a bit of business etiquette. Um, you must know that greetings are very important. Um, do not rush a greeting. Uh, and also when greeting someone, shake their hand with either both hands or only the right hand and always make eye contact. Also, smart, uh, small talk is important and um, Ethiopians are non-confrontational and are really indirect. So if they if they apologize, it's not, it is not with uh, words, but with actions. And also a different quote to remember uh, for doing business in Ethiopia is foreign connections are generally viewed positively within Ethiopia as they are often associated with aid and continued investment. Now I'm giving the word to Lex. Thank you. Now let's talk a bit more about the economy of Ethiopia. Despite being the second most populous country in Africa, Ethiopia is one of the fastest uh, growing economies in the world. Uh, in 2014, the, the GDP of uh, Ethiopia was 54.8 billion US dollars. The average growth of the country's economy is 10.7% over the last decade. Now the GDP of Ethiopia is uh, 110 billion US dollars. The Eth Ethiopian government um, has invested heavily in critical infrastructure, which is the main reason for um, the rapid development of the country. Uh, the development has uh, attracted a lot of foreign investors to the country as well. Uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia's plans uh, to achieve uh, is to achieve growth in a variety of areas, including agriculture, rural uh, development, infrastructure and good governance. Many of these plans um, objectives include maintaining the average uh, GDP of the country, um, to meet the Millennium, millennium Development Goals. Um, several um, infrastructure development projects are underway to make um, Ethiopia more attractive to foreign investors. One of these um, projects is to modernize several airports, particularly Addis Ababa International Airport, and uh, rebuild certain uh, domestic airports which will be able to accommodate more uh, passengers. There are also road and rail uh, developments in the works which, which would undoubtedly uh, benefit Ethiopia's transportation sector. Um, there are four, four main invest, uh, investment opportunities in Ethiopia that are critical in the development of the country. Um, you have uh, the, the transport, uh, transport infrastructure, the manufacturing sector, agriculture and uh, energy sector. Let's talk about the transportation, uh, transport infrastructure first. As a landlocked um, country, Ethiopia makes uh, use of a um, Djibouti uh, port as its uh, fundamental gateway to global trade. A rapid uh, financial increase over the decade, coupled with uh, the introduction of the African continental uh, free trade area and an increase of Ethiopian towns, has uh, extended call for cargo and uh, public ship shipping. But to use the port, you need to be able to transport the uh, products, so development of the railways and boats um, are uh, critical. Manufacturing growth uh, within the industry is important uh, for building the country's technological and uh, industrial capabilities, creating a wide range of employment opportunities, increasing the income. Um, the development of the manufacturing industry will help to improve uh, the factor productivity and competitiveness of the economy as a whole, as well as uh, it will have impact uh, on the supply chain. Um, let's talk about uh, agriculture now. Agriculture is uh, the backbone of Ethiopia's economy, accounting for 41.4% of the, uh, the country's GDP. Ethiopia's imported uh, agriculture in industry has risen uh, about around 10% per year, and the government uh, wants to invest annually 14.7% of their uh, total span, uh, expenses to the agriculture uh, sector. Um, uh, Ethiopia's is a significant uh, renewable energy resources. Uh, that can help it achieve its goals uh, for countrywide electrification. Despite uh, all its potential, um, uh, the country energy sector is still not at uh, its full potential because uh, of uh, not enough development in the energy sector. Uh, that's why uh, a lot of Ethiopians uh, still uh, rely on uh, traditional biomass energy sources. And uh, that's why uh, Ethiopia is as one of the lowest per capita electricity usages in uh, Africa. Thank you for listening, everybody. This was our presentation for Ethiopia. <laughs>